In my last video, I showed how to do reflow soldering using SMD stencil, and I ended up making a few of these boards with slightly different valued components. So today we will take a look at how well they work. If you haven't watched my previous video and are interested in doing reflow soldering, I would recommend you checking that video out as well. One of the components I used on this board is a LT3463 do-rail DC to DC converter chip, which comes in a tiny 3mm by 3mm DFN package with a lead pitch of only 0.5mm. So reflow soldering is pretty much the only way to deal with these kind of devices. And because of the fine pitch, you are probably better off having the PCB professionally made instead of resorting to, say, a uh, SMD adapter board, and especially given how affordable PCB services these days are. Speaking of which, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where you can have your PCBs professionally made. JLC PCB offers hobbyists and professionals very affordable PCB manufacturing services. For instance, you can get 10 pieces of dual-layer PCBs made with a dimension up to 10 cm by 10 cm each for just $2 plus shipping. And you can also order a standard 28 cm by 38 cm laser-cut stainless steel stencil for your design for just an additional $9. JLC PCB can manufacture PCBs up to 6 layers at a very competitive price. So why not give them a try for your next electronics project? This board I made here is a simple differential amplifier based on Texas Instruments INA117 High Common Mode Voltage Differential Amplifier Chip. In fact, the circuit here is very simple. And uh, as you can see here in the schematics, it basically just consists of a DC to DC converter circuitry that provides the uh, plus and minus 15 volts needed by the amplifier chip and the INA117 chip itself, which is a unit gain amplifier, which essentially converts the differential input into a single-ended output. Of course, I could have made the amplifier a little bit more precise by incorporating an offset adjustment circuitry, but for INA117, the offset voltage is extremely low, and the typical offset voltage value is only at 0.1 millivolt. And even at the maximum quoted offset voltage, it's uh, only 1 millivolt. So this is good enough for most of the scenarios. So I did not bother adding the offset adjustment resistors and the potentiometer. So you may ask, what's the point of using this unit gain amplifier at the first place? After all, we're not doing much with the input signal since there's no amplification, right? Well, not quite. You see that one advantage of using a differential amplifier is the ability to reject voltage signals seen by both of the differential inputs. This is common mode rejection ratio, CMRR, you see in the data sheet. Typically, the uh, common, re uh, common mode rejection ratio is uh, really high for these uh, differential amplifiers. For instance, this uh, INA117, it is specified at uh, 86 decibel. This means that a differential amplifier is pretty much immune to common mode noise. One of the common use of this kind of uh, differential amplifier is for high side current sensing. And uh, INA117 is especially well suited if you're dealing with high supply voltages up to plus minus 200 volts, given its high common mode input range. By the way, high side sensing uh, is all a relative term, so basically it's relative to your ground, and it could be either plus or minus supply voltage. Another use of uh, this differential amplifier is to remove ground reference. This is useful, for instance, for using oscilloscopes. Since oscilloscopes probes are main circuit referenced, you will have to be very careful when probing circuits that are mains powered, as if you placed your ground clip on the wrong place, you could easily short out uh, your mains, right, and damage your probes or the circuits under test. Anyway, enough talking. Uh, now let's do something with this board I built. 
And the reason I switched different components here, uh, different components value, and ignored these uh, botch resistors, I was just trying to come up with the exact uh, exact value I'm looking for. But uh, the reason is that uh, this is switching power supply, and uh, when I powered it on initially, I can hear a little bit of a uh, uh, mechanical noise emitted from these uh, inductors. So I was changing different inductors and uh, adjusting the uh, the timing capacitor to make sure that uh, I, we can operate at the frequency with the lowest noise. But anyway, so those are just me uh, playing around. And for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hook it up to a power supply and uh, put some input signal and measure the output to see if we got this uh, working right. So let's do a couple of measurements uh, of this board we built. And uh, the first one, let's just uh, measure some of its basic performance. For that, I connected it to this uh, power supply, it's 5 volts, and uh, let's just verify that using this Keithley 197. And the reason I'm using this meter is because it has uh, it's a five and a half digits, so we can see that it's very precise. So this is a 5 volts, and uh, the input into this uh, uh, differential pair differential input is from the Cromheight uh, voltage standard. Right now I'm outputting a 10 millivolt uh, signal, a DC rather, so let's take a look. And it's 9.988, so it's 10 millivolts. So when we're measuring the uh, output, we would expect a exact 10 millivolts. So of course there's some uh, gain uh, discrepancies and uh, non-linearity of the, uh, the amplifier, so we, but we would expect it to be very close. So now let's measure the output. And indeed we're 9.950 uh, 9 for 8. So it is very close to the input value here. And of course because this is a uh, differential uh, amplifier, we can swap these two leads and uh, we will get a negative output value. So if we swap the inputs to the other way around, and we then can uh, measure it uh, negative 10 uh, millivolts. Of course, let me swap the lead here because uh, technically speaking, the left side here is ground. So this is our uh, 10 millivolts signal from the input. Okay, not a problem at all. So now let me increase that uh, input to say. Uh, uh, 1 volt, sorry, 0.1 volt, rather. I think it's 100 millivolts. Let's just double check on that. Yep, so it's 100 millivolts. And uh, so now let's take a look at the output. So it should, it should match that 100 very, very closely. And it's 100 millivolts, no problem. And finally, let's, well, not finally, but let's uh, take it up to 1 volt. And because we're using a plus minus 15 volts power supply, so we expect uh, we can easily push the input dynamic range to maybe 12, 13 volts. So let's uh, do the measurement again. So the input is uh, just under one volt, and the output is just under one volt as well. No problem at all. Now let's uh, take it up to say uh, 10 volts. And uh, that's pretty much the the, uh, the voltage I can go up to on this uh, chrome height uh, voltage standard. But uh, let's take a look. Whoops. So now we're almost uh, 10 volts. And ignore the negative sign, it doesn't really matter which end we're testing here. So let's take a look at the output. And again, we're very close tracking that input voltage. So this differential ampl amplifier is uh, working properly. By the way, I forgot to show you the output voltage from this uh, DC to DC converter earlier. And uh, let's just quickly verify that, even though uh, you saw that the board was working, so the voltage was, uh, of course, uh, has to be uh, correct. But anyway, so let's say that uh, the input voltage here is again 5 volts. 
Uh, by the way, I'm not sure if you could hear the little humming uh, in the background. Actually, that is coming from these inductors, as I, as I said earlier. Um, I had to choose some uh, components, swapping them around, trying to minimize that uh, noise. And uh, um, again, that is actually normal operating noise, but uh, it does seem to be a little louder from the uh, recording than the actual uh, the sound it emits. But anyway, so we have a 5 volts coming in, and uh, so the output voltage here uh, on the board is plus and f uh, minus. So let's just measure directly at the, uh, the IC. So at the, uh, the uh, differential amplifier, so pin 4 is our negative uh, 15 volts. So let's measure carefully here. So, yep, we have a uh, minus 15.4. So that's it well within uh, our range. And uh, the positive side is on pin 7. So let's carefully. Again, 15.4 uh, uh, volts, so not a problem. What I want to show you next is to use this differential amplifier to measure mains voltage with an oscilloscope. We know that because oscilloscopes are mains earth referenced, it could be potentially dangerous for using an oscilloscope to measure another mains earth reference device. As in an extreme situation, if you accidentally place the uh, earth clip on the main slide wire, you essentially shorted out the mains and uh, you'll most likely see some spectacular sparks and in the meantime, most likely either ruin your probe or the circuit you're measuring and uh, could potentially cause injury as well. So here I'm using a simple 1 to 200 uh, resistive divider here and uh, it's uh, divided from the center so that uh, it remains symmetrical. It doesn't matter which way I connect uh, this to the mains. And uh, on the probe side, I'm just using uh, times one because I already have the uh, resistive divide divider here. Now I could have just used the uh, times 10 uh, probe, but the problem is uh, it is a little bit of a towards the uh, upper limit of what this uh, differential probe's input, uh, sorry, not differential probe, but the differential uh, amplifier's input. So the, the waveform would appear a little clipped. And that's why I'm using this uh, uh, resistive divider here. And to measure mains uh, voltage, I'm using this uh, very safe setup. Uh, just kidding, it's actually not very safe at all. And uh, uh, the spare wire setup is just for illustration purpose and uh, it shouldn't uh, uh, in any ways do that. And if you do need to do this, by the way, you know, make sure that these two wires, uh, the exposed parts are uh, not at the same length because otherwise you could potentially just touch them accidentally anyway. So now let's hook up the uh, probe and uh, let me just hook it up. I'm going to hook everything up before I power this uh, thing up. So I'm going to, uh, in no particular order here, I'm just going to do this. And by the way, this is uh, powered off. So now I can safely plug this in. Now I wanted to take a look, uh, concentrate on the oscilloscope. So now I'm turning this power, uh, mains power on. And uh, now you see the uh, waveform on the scope. So let me let it trigger properly here. So that's the mains waveform. And as you can see, there's no problem, nothing blows up. So now I'm turning this off. And of course, because this is a differential amplifier, we can swap the input leads and everything should still work. So let's do that when it's powered off. Let's swap the input leads. And just like so. And now let me uh, power it up again. And uh, I don't know why this trigger is a little bit of... Uh... Okay, so let's trigger it. Again, you see the same waveform on the uh, oscilloscope. So that's actually just using this uh, differential uh, probe to measure mains voltage, which you couldn't do using a standard uh, oscilloscope probe uh, hooked up to a uh, the standard uh, oscilloscope input. So anyway, I hope you find this uh, video interesting and hopefully you learn something uh, meaningful. And if you like the video, please uh, give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe and share. 
I will catch up with you next time.